police spent much of the day meticulously investigating the crime scene. They have taken some physical evidence from the home, but also admit they have as many questions as answers. It's like something we watch on the news. We never thought one day it hit us. It's scary to think that, that you know, I don't think they have any suspects yet. The first thing you look at are who are logical suspects. In the death and injury of children, particularly in their own home, it tends to be one of the parents. I think it's fair to say at the very beginning, everyone was a potential suspect. But Darren, his version of events that he had been upstairs with the baby appeared to be accurate. And secondly, she had never, never told anyone, including the police, that he had been the, the assailant. Ruth here insisted that an unknown intruder attacked her and the children and got away. Darley's initial statement doesn't have a lot of detail. Somebody harming my children, somebody harming me. When the police were there, they saw a cut screen in the garage, which seems to indicate that someone cut the screen from the outside, stepped through the screen, and headed for the main part of the house. And they found bloody footprints on the kitchen floor, broken glass, bloody fingerprints, and blood everywhere. She said that she had fought off the attack. The only description of the attacker was a white male wearing dark clothing, and that she said she struggled with him and that he left towards the garage. Are you looking at this for one person? Well, based on her statement, yes. You know, that's where we're starting from. So the first place they're going to go is go to the hospital to try to get anything they can from her. I do remember the two officers standing over the bed, asking me questions left and right about Darren. I was scared because, to me, it was real easy to see what they were trying to get at. When I got to work, one of the nurses came into my office and said, I need to make you aware of this patient that we have. Um, we're trying to protect her because we don't know who did this to her. And we want to be sure she's safe. She was bruised from her wrist up to her armpit. You know, she was afraid to be by herself. Dolly was scared to death. I ain't kidding. I've never seen anybody that scared before. Somebody tried to kill her, killed her kids. They're out there. A last goodbye to two little boys, Devin, who would have turned seven this week, and his five-year-old brother, Damon, stabbed as they slept in their home with their parents close by. I remember going in, and we were just all holding Darley up, keeping her from falling to the ground. We chose to bury them together in one casket. And now they'll walk through heaven together. At the end of the service, balloons were released into a clear blue sky, a tribute to innocence lost. Darren and Darley fully cooperated with police and conducted several interviews, seemingly unaware that they were starting to suspect Darley. They told us that they had hundreds of leads that they were looking into. They told us that this man had left fingerprints, that they had found flesh underneath my fingernails. They were indicating to us in every possible way that, you know, that it was just going to be a little bit of time that they were going to find this man. The public had been supportive of her up to this point. And then there's this local news footage that comes out. About a week after the murders, on June 14th, the Routiers hold a birthday party at the cemetery for Devin, who would have turned seven that day. And a local television station went out and caught it. And I said, Darley, Devin always had the most wonderful birthday parties, and we know that he's in heaven. And I said, let's just, for one day, try and get through it without crying a lot. We had a graveside prayer service and then later had 
kind of a birthday party because Devin's birthday invitations had already gone out. Some of the neighborhood kids came. Happy birthday to you. They sprayed Silly String, which took maybe 20 seconds. They sang Happy Birthday. And you hear Darlie and Darren both sing. Love you, Devin and Damon. You know, just like they're still there. Why the confetti? Why the balloons? Why the happy birthday song? Well, because even though we're sad because Devin and Damon aren't here, we try to hang on to what we can to keep to get us through these times. And I recall how shocked I was at the sight of that. And I wasn't the only one who was shocked. Uh, lead prosecutor Greg Davis was shocked as well. I was really taken aback by her demeanor. I tell you, as a parent, I found it disgusting. She was smiling and chewing gum, spraying this silly string around. And just as a mother, I thought, that's just not appropriate. I mean, what's going on? So a couple of days after the birthday party, we get a phone call. We need y'all to come up to the station. We hopped in the car, we ran up there, and we were excited that they, that they were getting close to catching who did this. I said, don't you think you should have an attorney? And they both said, innocent per people do not need attorneys. They told us that they had to find out everything, you know, that it could be anybody, that they had to check all aspects, and so they needed to know as much about us as possible. Well, that wasn't the case. They had already decided the first day who had done this. They took us into two different rooms. He wanted to take me to the house and just walk through it. I get in the car, they take me. So we go to the house, told them everything that I did that night. And they go, yep, that's exactly what you did, because the evidence 100% supports that. Good. When are y'all going to find out who did this? I was at home that night watching television, and they broke into the programming. At approximately 10.20 PM this evening, investigators from the Rowlett Police Department arrested Darlie Routier. I was just like, what? I how could she even be a suspect? Why are they arresting her? I couldn't believe it because I knew, I knew there's no way she had done this. I started screaming and my youngest daughter started crying and we just, we couldn't believe it. We believe that the white male suspect described by Darlie Routier as the man that attacked her and murdered her children never existed. We also believe that the wounds present on Darlie Routier were self-inflicted. At the police station, I could see down the hallway. They're all jumping up, high-fiving each other, celebrating that they had arrested Darlie. Made me sick. I mean, he went crazy. He said he started screaming and hollering and crying and having a fit. It was practically like the boys died again. I yelled down the hallway, and they all came running. And I just told them, I said, you, you guys, y'all got the wrong person. You guys are making a big mistake. I swear I did not murder my children. I swear. 